How about those Spurs, huh? Talking about parlaying these money lines, and they look shitty back to back. Oh, man, that overtime win against Memphis, what, two days ago, uh, where they were leading by like eight in the fourth quarter. And then yesterday, the fucking Lakers go into San Antonio and get the W, which obviously throws a wrench in my plans for everything, whether we're talking about my parlay money, which, uh, which got upset by them. Uh, super shitty. Other than that, I won every other game. Fuck you, San Antonio, today. Um, and then it also fucks up my Lakers team. Now we win back-to-back -back games. We are like the third worst team in the league. we got to be the worst team in the league so we can get that draft pick. That sounds ridiculous, but that's how I feel. Uh, damn you, Spurs. That fucking, I wanted that money line uh, parlay. I did well with my clips and my whoever the fuck else I took, Houston Rockets. Um can't believe it was uh, San Antonio that faltered at home against the Lakers. I thought that one was the surest pick out of all of them. However, I'm wrong. <clears throat> I'm going to have to pay a couple of dollars to uh, to get back. So, where, what are we doing today? We're doing the Daily Wager. This is Dustin Coyle. Uh, this is another episode of Intelligent Thoughts. we got the Daily Wager number 21 for, I think it's Thursday, maybe like the 6th or something like that of April. Uh... Let's go ahead and take a look at some NBA, huh? We'll <clears throat> do a little more of a recap, I guess, of yesterday. <clears throat> the Lakers did beat San Antonio 102-95. Tyler Ennis with a career high 90 fucking, uh, excuse me, a career high 19 points. Not 90. Uh, that would have been pretty sick. Noteworthy, to say the least. Uh, other than that, it's a pretty solid little performance for everybody. Larry Nance is now playing center, 15-9. Eleven and eight for Julius Randle. Kawhi Leonard just eleven points in fourteen minutes. Um, fuck you, Popovich. This really screwed me over, Popovich. Eight points in sixteen minutes for Lamarcus Aldridge. God damn it! Oh, man, I tell you what, betting on Pop can be a fucking issue sometimes. Uh, still, well, however you look at it, good game for Cleveland. I said Los Angeles. That's what I said. Uh, good game there. Cleveland at Boston. Cleveland wins 114 to 91. Handles the game pretty well throughout. King James, 36 points, 10 rebounds, 6 assists. 15 points, 16 rebounds for uh, Caleb. 19 points for Kyrie. Uh, for Boston, 26 points for Isaiah Thomas. 13 points for Crowder. <clears throat> good performance there for Cleveland. They're back to the number one seed in the East. Denver goes to Houston to take on the Rockets. Houston wins 110-104. They secure the number three seed. They will be the number three seed in the playoffs. Uh, Jokic had 12 points, 19 boards, 9 assists. 23 points for Gallinari on 3 for 8, shooting from downtown uh, for the Rockets. James Harden, 31 points, 7 rebounds, 10 assists. 16 for Nene, 15 for Capella, 15 for Ariza. <clears throat> Houston plays just 8 players in this game. <clears throat> but uh, looks pretty good overall. Uh, Oklahoma City, 103. Memphis, 100. Westbrook, 40, 45 points, 9 rebounds, 10 assists. He's 6 assists away from averaging a triple-double for the season. Uh, Victor Oladipo chips in with 15 points. And uh, for Memphis, we had, what, Zach Randolph with 20 and 9 off the bench. Uh, no Mike Conley in this one. 23 points for Marcus Saul. Good game there. Uh, Toronto against Detroit at Detroit, Toronto, uh, 105, Detroit 102, the return of Kyle Lowry uh, in this one, a little bit earlier than I think people had expected him to come back, he puts up 27 points, 10 assists, 12 points, 10 assists for DeRozan, 19 points for Valanciunas, a uh, good little victory there uh, for Detroit, 16 points for Harris off the bench, 16 points for Smith playing point guard, Drummond, 11 and 14, <clears throat> just not enough to get it done. The Heat pull into a tie for 8th place in the East with a 112-99 victory over the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, both of them kind of switching things up a little bit. Charlotte looked like they were getting a little bit better. The Heat looking like they were getting a little bit worse. Um, <clears throat> 26 points for Johnson. 13 points. 20 rebounds for Hassan Whiteside. 33 points for Garan Drajic. Uh 5 for 9 from downtown for Drajic. 4 for 7 for Jay Rich. 6 for 7 for Johnson. Um, for Charlotte, let's see, second night of a back-to-back, -back. Batum gives you 24 points, Kimba Walker after 37 the other night gives you 18 points, 5 assists a day, <clears throat> Marcus, or Marvin Williams, excuse me, 15 points, 12 rebounds there, uh, what else do we have, two other games from last night, Golden State at Phoenix, Golden State wins their 13th straight, uh, victory clinches 
the number one seed in the West. They win 120 to 111. If I'm not mistaken, Curry had like 23 points in the first quarter. He finishes with 42 points, 11 assists, 8 for 13 from downtown. Uh, 22 points for Clay Thompson. No Draymond Green, no Iguodala in this matchup. A pretty easy win there for Golden State. Uh, what do we have? 21 for Booker, 20 for Tyler Ulis. Uh, Dudley with 19 off the bench. I mean, one last game from last night. The Clippers at home uh, taking on the Dallas Mavericks. The Clips win 112-101. to Blake Griffin with his third straight 30-point game. He has uh, 32 points, 4 rebounds, 6 assists. DeAndre Jordan, 11 points, 20 boards. Redick with 25 points uh, from the shooting guard position, making 5 three-pointers, all 8 free throws. And Chris Paul, 22 and 11 uh, at the point guard position for Dallas. Uh, sort of a balanced effort for just about everybody. Barnes gives you 15. Yogi Ferrell gives you 14. Um, <clears throat> JJ Bray gives you 14. Wesley Matthews gives you 11. But um, ultimately, not enough to win the game. Uh, and they come up just short here against the Los Angeles Clippers. Whew. How about that? A quick little recap. I kind of like doing that little recap, actually. Makes things a little bit easier. It reminds me of the Buster Olney. Uh, don't sue me. Baseball tonight recap, scoreboard thing of a jig. But uh, enough of yesterday's games. Let's get into today. Alrighty, looking at the jump today, we got six games in the NBA. Uh, just a few games for everybody left, like four games approximately per team. Let's get down to the motherfucking nitty gritty, huh? Game number one, five o'clock. We have the Chicago Bulls at the Philadelphia 76ers. Let's see here. What do we have going on? So they're in the middle of a four-game road trip. This will be the third of four games. Um, let's see. Uh, basically, Philadelphia has five players out for the season, including the new backup point guard, Sergio Rodriguez. He's going to be out, not including him, but he's out for the sixth consecutive game today. <clears throat> they just gave up 81 points in the first half, 12 uh, three-pointers in the first half to the Nets, uh, 64%. 51. They basically just got destroyed uh defensively by a pretty fucking shitty team. Hmm, okay, what else do we have here? Basically, it is what it is. Dwayne Wade, I guess he's going to be doing a little bit of conditioning work. He's not going to be playing in the game, but let's go ahead and take a look at betonline.ag. Let's see what my numbers are looking like here. Chicago is a five and a half point favorite. I saw that at six and a half last night, so it's going the other direction. Minus 256 on the money line for the Bulls. Go ahead and take that. <clears throat> I think it's pretty likely that the Bulls are going to win the game today. Um, you know, they've looked up and down as of late, but, uh, they're actually playing a little bit better offensively without Dwayne Wade on the court. And I don't really think that, uh, Philadelphia has enough firepower to stop them today. If anything, it would just be because it's a road game, uh, another, you know, on a four game road trip, it's, they're getting a little bit tired. Um, they don't really have this, you know, the necessary second scorer, but at minus 256, I think that's a pretty fair, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that shit. All right, moving on to another 5 o'clock game we have. The aforementioned 81-point first-half team, the Brooklyn Nets, taking on the Orlando Magic in Orlando. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> basically, Brooklyn has won three straight games, six of its last ten, which actually makes the, their streak better than it was like a week ago when they had their first winning streak in a full year. Um, let's see what else we have. The Magic. Basically seems to suck. Uh, Alfred Payton has five triple-doubles since March 1st, just in one month. That's pretty damn good. 13 points, 7 rebounds, 8 assists per game. Averaging, that's, that's pretty damn good for a point guard. Uh, but I don't really see a clear winner here, or a clear favorite. I don't really like either team. What's the spread? Orlando minus 2.5. Orlando minus 141. I say stay away from it. Uh, <clears throat> the Nets are hot right now, but then they're the road team, and they're actually still worse than Orlando. Alfred Payton plays well. Uh, if Aaron Gordon plays well, I think that the Magic should win the game. Just too t difficult to call. I say stay the fuck away from this one. All right, moving on to the final 5 o'clock game of the evening. This one is uh, pitted between two people who should be in the playoffs. Milwaukee at Indiana. Uh, this should be a damn good game. Uh, the Bucks look for a season sweep of Indiana, actually. Um, so, let's see here. 
In uh, Indiana's last eight games, Paul George has been averaging 31.3 points per game. He's the reason they've been, uh, I guess, back into the playoff picture. It looked like they were going to be knocked out with the Heat and uh, the, the Bucks playing well, but it looks like they're back in for now or close to it. Uh, what else do we got here? Half game ahead of Atlanta for fifth place and two games ahead of uh, Chicago. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, I don't really know who's going to win here. The Pacers are 27 at home. The Bucks are pretty good on the road, 18 and 12. I think that the Pacers are probably going to be favored by like three or four points. Let's go ahead and take a look at the spread. We have a four and a half point favorite for the Pacers. Money line is minus 190, plus 165 for the Bucks. Um, I don't like it. It's too difficult for me to call. I don't really know who's going to win. If the <clears throat> underdog money line was a little bit higher, maybe a 190, I'd probably take either team as an underdog. But uh, with it being the way it is, I don't know. Not a lot. Watch watch and see if it does stretch out, and then maybe go with the 190 or something like that if you can get it. Otherwise, just lay off of this one. Stick with your Chicago Bulls for the minute. Okay, we move on, we move on. 5.30 p.m., we have one game, and it should be a doozy. We have the Washington motherfuckers taking on the New York Knicks with the third seed in the East at stake. Uh, if Washington wins today, they will be back into a tie with uh, Toronto for the number three seed. If you remember, they were actually the number two seed for a couple days, like a month ago. Um, then kind of slipped a little bit. Let's see. The Wizards are three and three and zero against the Knicks this season, and have won twelve of the last thirteen games against the Knicks. That's pretty fucking crazy. <clears throat> uh, six straight road wins in the series. Uh, let's see. Washington is saying they need to step up their defense. I do not disagree. But the Knicks have actually beaten three teams that are fighting for the playoffs over the last week. They beat the Heat, the Pistons, and the Bulls. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, and they're attempting to win back-to-back -back games for the first time since December 20th through 22nd. That's shitty, man. The Knicks look like they could have been good. Um, cool. And that's basically what we're looking at. Let's take a peek at the spread. But for the Knicks, man. After being just dilapidated, they finally turned it around a tiny bit. Uh, spread, spread, spread. Wizards minus five and a half. I like it. Uh, Wizards minus two twenty. I like it. You guys know I'm a big Wizards proponent. Uh, minus two twenty. I was hoping it was going to be a little bit closer than that, maybe in minus one ninety or something like that. But at the same day or at the same time, you know, I'll take that. I, I'd say. Much better than a two to one chance that the Wizards win this game. I think they should be favored. Uh, maybe even higher. I'm surprised it's not like a like a three hundred or something like that. So go ahead and take the Wiz. Uh, what minus two forty or whatever two twenty? Excuse me. Two games left to talk about for the day. We have uh, TNT six o'clock. This should be a good one. Boston Celtics at Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta just one game over five hundred right now. Um. Al Horford returns to Atlanta to play his old team before he signed with, uh, let's see, he played 10 years in Atlanta before he signed with uh, with Boston uh, during the summer. Uh, it obviously has worked out a little bit for Boston. Horford averaging 14 points, 6.9 rebounds, 5 assists. I guess the most in the NBA for centers in his first season with Boston. Um... Let's see, they've split the previous two games in the season. Atlanta has lost two straight, lost nine of its last 11 games. Um, that sucks for them. What do I think is going to happen here? Um, I don't know. I, Boston, obviously, they just played last night, though, in a pretty difficult uh, loss. Excuse me. They do seem to play pretty well in back-to-back, so I think it's because they're defensively pretty good. If I had to pick anybody, I would pick Boston, but I don't want to uh, just because of the nature of that game last night. Let me take a look at the Spriggity spread here, if I can get my uh, thing to pop it up. Spread. Celtics minus one and a half points. Hmm, do I like that? What is that? A minus 122 for the Celtics in Atlanta. Uh, I think that I like it. I think that's probably okay to take that. They'll, they'll likely win the game, but I don't know for sure. Uh, but that's such a close, such a close money line. I think it's probably worth the money.